All right, this is part three of my examination of Carl Bau's television program, Creation in the 21st Century. Uh, this episode is entitled Down from the Trees and stars Ian Juby of the Canadian Creation Museum. Um, we left off the second part. Uh, he was, um, I believe, going to gonna fuck up and slander Donald Johansson's name, drag it through the mud, uh, claiming that Johansson fraudulently portrays a knee joint as belonging to Lucy when it really doesn't. Uh, let's 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 take apart this little claim here, okay? And when you see Lucy depicted, what you are seeing, you are not seeing the knee that was actually found with it. You were finding what you were looking at is a knee that was found first. All right. The following year, Johansson came back and found the rest of the skeleton. Yes. Okay. So what Juby here is claiming is that. The knee joint that's commonly depicted with Lucy, you know, when, when we evolutionists are out there saying, look, Lucy was a biped, we can prove it, look at her knee joint, right, that's the claim we make. He's saying, no, but the knee joint was actually from a different fossil found all this great distance away. Um, now this claim has been debunked so many times that I am absolutely 100% convinced that any creotard out there making the claim knows that it's false okay there's no excuse for ignorance anymore uh jim lapard uh made he has gone out of his way for many 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 years two decades uh finding anybody who makes this claim um and sending them correcting them politely sent all with all of the relevant information demonstrating that the claim is false the fossil AL129, the knee, not Lucy's knee, the knee, not the one featured with Lucy now. Okay, just keep that straight. This is a completely different knee. That find was described back in the 70s along with Lucy, AL288, who had her own knee. Okay, the knees are two separate finds. They were never mixed together. The only thing they have in common is that they're from the same species because they're, they're different sizes, but they're otherwise identical in morphology. There's no doubt that the knee AL129 came from the same species as Lucy AL288. That's it. That's the connection that the two have. There's no other, they were never, Johansson never lied about it. Johansson never, never once suggested or hinted at that they were, that there's somehow this deception. That is a story. Now, uh, about oh, two or three years ago, in one of my newsletters, I mentioned briefly that the knee had not been found with the rest of the skeleton. Yes. So I got an email from a gentleman by the name of Jim Lippard uh, from the Talk Origins archive and basically said, this claim is false and sent me to a link on the Talk Origins archive. Okay, so just to be clear, so you mentioned this, or Ian Juby mentioned this on his, in his newsletter um, as, he's, as he's prone to do. Lepard contacted him and told him that the story was false. Um, that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, just just as a point of comparison, um, I have this little clip from Ian Juby's uh, Complete Creation series. For example, now after I wrote a brief internet article as part of my newsletter a couple of years ago, uh, got an email from Jim Foley. I had mentioned in passing that the knee joint, the knee bone, had been found two kilometers away from the rest of the skeleton. Jim Foley wrote me a very polite letter. Uh, he is the, uh, one of the gentlemen who is the, uh, one of the editors for the Talk Origins Anti-Creationist Archive. Wrote me a kind letter saying this is false and sent me a link to a Talk Origins article. So Wait a second. I thought you said that it was Jim Lepard that sent you the email uh, directing you to the Talk Origins website. Uh, in that talk, you just said Jim Foley did. That's interesting. I, I don't know. Um, so was it one, or did, or did they both? Did this happen to you twice? I said, all right, I, at this point I was conceding defeat. Okay, maybe I made a mistake, maybe I've been misinformed. So I went there, and on the very website they have a letter from Donald Johansson, the discoverer very of Lucy, important. which I've now gotten a copy of the original letter for, displayed here for you. And in this letter, Donald Johansson says, no, 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 no. It was the knee that was found two and a half kilometers away yes. from the rest of the skeleton. 
So I don't know about you. I was kind of confused at this point. Uh, tell me, first of all, that no, the knee was not found away, and then show me a letter admitting by Johansson Certainly. that it was found far away. Not only two and a half kilometers, over a mile and a half away, <laughs> But I think he points out that it's in a lower stratum altogether. 70 meters lower. That's about 200 feet deeper stratigraphically. So you have the rock layers. It's found, the skeleton was found up here. The knee, the knee was found 200 feet deeper in the rocks, two and a half kilometers away from the rest of the skeleton. I don't think they're the same skeleton. Not at all. You know, I have to believe, okay, so Crocodile Fundy either has stones the size of coconuts or he's actually somewhat mentally retarded um and i'm not sure i'm I'm actually pretty close to equally split as to which is the case so he tells us that he was willing to accept that the lucy's knee story was false until he went to the talk origins website and found the letter by donald johansson okay that's what he's saying right here okay i will put a link to the to the article he's talking about down on my testicles and below and uh and and let so you can look at it yourself but in the meantime i'm going to show you a a, a here is what the letter says it's all it's on the site you can link to it right from the site so here's the letter so here you see the letter uh that donald johansson sent to jim lepard on for the talk origins article uh, where he describes the, in, that in 1973, he found the knee joint, the famous knee joint, that, that's named AL129. Uh, he then talks about the discovery of Lucy. So this is all, this, this is the reason I said either he's got stones the size of coconuts because he's showing a letter that completely proves that his claim is false. He's showing the actual letter that proves that claim and yet saying using it as evidence that supports that he's correct uh that's a that's a pretty ballsy maneuver i am almost thinking that he doesn't quite understand that he really believes that this letter supports what he says um in other words he sees the word knee he sees he sees lucy he sees knee he sees found two and a half kilometers away and he thinks while this says what i you know, originally thought it said. Um, but the important part in here I wanted to point out is that now I have it highlighted here where it states that Mr. Brown is thoroughly incorrect in saying that Lucy's femur was found two to three kilometers away from the rest of the skeleton. As you can see, these are two very different discoveries. The 1973 knee joint in the lower is in, in the lower part of the strat stratigraphic section and Lucy's skeleton some 70 meters above it. So they were found in different locations and different things, but nobody ever claimed it. Nobody legitimately ever claimed that the 1973 knee joint was part of the Lucy skeleton, okay? It, uh, that is, it's a terrible, terrible, slanderous thing to say. Now, of course, Johansson tries to portray this as uh, because there was a knee found with the skeleton and it had some vague uh, resemblance to the knee they found. Wait, Johansson tried to portray this because the fossil Lucy was found with her own knee. What the fuck are you saying here? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Um, she was found with her own knee. So it, he was trying to portray, uh, you didn't finish the sentence, trying to portray this, uh, portray this as what? Mean, mean he was trying to be absolutely 100% honest and report exactly what he found? That he was did absolutely nothing wrong? That the only thing wrong with this story is the fact that a bunch of fucking creotards took it and used it as some kind of evidence because they know, again, that the morons in the audience are not going to go look up this information themselves. They're simply going to accept that the guy talking in front of them is telling the truth. And because of that, they're slandering a good man's name. They're trying to portray Donald Johansson, that he's somehow lying, that he's somehow mixing two skeletons together, that he's that he's found a monkey skeleton and then this human knee far away, and he says, well, they're from the same skeleton. Um, you, it, it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. And I do, I'm going to hold that it violates your fucking ninth commandment. Now, a question I often get is, where are the human fossils? Well, you know what? 
I think we have the human fossils. I think they've been mixed in with the ape fossils, and this is only one of many examples. I believe you're right, and you're going to lead us to the truth. Yes. Now, I really don't want to sound like, a, like an academic elitist here, okay? Um, so forgive me if that's how I come off. But I'm really curious um, about the number and quality of comparative anatomy courses, of primatology courses, uh, you know, comparative anatomy of the vertebrates, uh, courses on anthropology, paleoanthropology, um, even basic introductory level courses in those topics. Uh, were required for a certificate of completion from a vocational tech school. Just curious because Ian Juby feels qualified uh, to make the, the, the statement that we are mixing uh, non-human primate and human fossils in, in the same lots. Um, that, that's the only reason that that question comes to my mind. Now this next part is hard to believe. Uh, when I say, I, I don't like using the word fraudulent. But in this case, I think I'm going to make an exception. To admit that has um, this is there's no other word for it. When they found the skeleton, the hip had been broken into about 40 pieces. Okay, and it was a very chimp hip. Certainly. So I've the, seen replications. Uh, yes. Now the problem is the knee appears to be from a creature that walks upright, but it doesn't match the hip, which was more like chimp-like from a creature that did not walk upright. All right, there's something laughable about Ian Juby talking about fraud, talking about, you know, daring again to smear another scientist's good name uh, through his outright lies and distortions. Uh, and I'm going to try to explain this, although this is going to take, I'm going to have to continue this on to the next part because I want to uh, enlist, I, I, I'm, I have a great video clip to show you that shows exactly what Owen Lovejoy did. Um, to that you'll we'll get into it in the next part, but I want to first start off with this. I want to finish this this portion, part three, off by talking about this broken into forty pieces. Now, this is a first of all, forty. This whole forty pieces thing is thrown out a lot. It's kind of I don't know what why that number, but anyway, in this case, it actually is true. Um, the that the ilium of the A of AL288 was broken into 40 pieces. But, now lest you, just before, now what he's trying to say here, now, and, and, and yes, it's maybe it's subtle and, you know, whatever, but think about it this way. He's, you're thinking 40 pieces, like, take a, take a pelvis, take a hammer to it, and hit it until you have 40 fragments of it, and then scatter those fragments around, erode them a little bit, and then say, put it back together again, Right? Now that's what he's that's the mental image that he's putting out here, at least the way I took what he's saying. So the scientists are gluing these back together again like a puzzle piece, trying to put it back together, and you know, that that it, it comes out to look like a chimpanzee. That's what he's saying. You know, in other words, if it's accurately put back together, it looks like a chimpanzee. Um, but the reality is it wasn't busted into forty pieces like a puzzle piece, but like a puzzle pieces, okay? That's simply false. It was found it was actually in three pieces, but three three pieces that had been broken on the surface, meaning it was it really the both the ilia and the sacrum were in one solid piece, fossilized into one solid piece, one piece, no amount, no gluing needed, no putting it back together again needed, and then after after it eroded out to the surface, it broke into three pieces that were just easy to put back together again. Okay, the forty pieces that he's talking about are 40 pieces that were broken when the bone was either fresh or fossilized, broke or cracked, and then fossilized as a solid piece again, okay? Now, this, when this happens, you can allow for a certain amount of distortion can occur, okay? And I guess a good, the reason I, I, I an analogy, I'm sorry, that if you t take, take a hard-boiled egg, okay? It's hard-boiled, intact, hard-boiled egg, and you, you crack it, jump, bounce it on the table a couple of times. Now you look at that egg and it's cracked into, we'll say, a hundred or more pieces, right? Now if it were to be fossilized like, like that, turned to stone, completely mineralized, changed content to something completely different, fossilized, solid like that, it would be in how you could say, when we found the egg, it was in 150 pieces. But it's all stuck together in roughly the same shape as the original egg. Kind of see that? Um, 
it would be it, it, it now if a portion of it's distorted then you, like it's dented in on one side then that's a distortion but the point is that it's not in 40 it's not in 150 separate pieces anyway i'll take this up in part 4